Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacey, creator at Mother Naked. If you want to follow me on Instagram, please do. It's at Mother Naked Candles. So what do I want to talk to you about today? Uh, how to create a strong scent throw in your candles and wax melts. I think there's a couple of factors after so much trial and error that I've made. I mean, you can hear the misery in my voice when I say that. I've, I've tried so many waxes, so many wicks, so many fragrance oils. I've tried everything. So what I'm telling you now is the information that I wish that someone would have given me when I started making candles and wax melts. So I think one of the major factors is I use a ribbon wick. These are ribbon wicks. I'll take one out for you. They are so different than other wicks. They come on a base like this. They're made from 100% natural fibers and they've got like lines on and they look pretty cool. So what someone kind of thought about when creating the wick apparently was it's as reliable as a cotton wick, which I loved because I originally wanted wooden wicks and I got some wooden wicks and they weren't bloody light. I got different wooden wicks from everybody and I had trouble lighting so many uh, in a batch and you just can't do that when you're selling candles. Uh, and I've bought wooden wick candles and they've just, they're so hard to light and so unpredictable. And then they kind of get a little bit big and no, I just, I'm, I'm not really, for me personally, a fan of wood wicks, but each to their own. So that's what they were thinking. Reliability of a cotton wick and kind of like aesthetically about a wooden wick. They're just different and cool and I really like them. And what they do is they're called the flickering flame wick or whatever that means. Um, well, I know what it means. It means that when your candle is lit, the the flame will flicker. Normally, don't, we don't want a flickering flame, but with a ribbon wick, we do. It happens just naturally. Uh, and when the flame is flickering, it's releasing all the fragrance. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think the ribbon wick for the candles smelling uh, as strong as they do is definitely a factor. You can get ribbon wicks from NI Candle Supplies, NI candle supplies, but I will leave the link below once I've checked it for you. You can't really buy them anywhere else unless you're buying from abroad. So, and they deliver so quick as well. So next, uh, definitely a part of it, obviously, is the fragrance oils that I use. Uh, I use Cozy Owl <laughs> of oil. I love the Cozy Owl fragrances. I will put their link below in the description box as well. They are peg-free, phthalate-free, silicon-free. Some are even CMR and paraben-free, so it depends on what oil you're using. But they're really cool. They come from natural sources and essential oils. Obviously, if you're using a fragrance oil, nothing's ever completely natural, uh, but they are as natural a fragrance oil as I possibly could find. So they are crazy strong. They are just, they're the strongest fragrance oils that I've used. And then mixing them at the temperature that I do for my candles and wax melts, I think just goes ding, ding, ding. Uh, so I think it's the combination of the two with fragrance oil uh, and my temperature pour my fragrance oils at. It's also worth noting that I use Eco Soya Wax from Candle Supplies. It is the CB1351 that I use. I absolutely adore it and I have tried wax galore. I've tried every wax, I think, um, bar palm wax, I did not try that. But uh, most of the other waxes I've tried and I love Eco Soya the most. It doesn't need topping up. I've never had an issue with topping up. You just pour and it pours beautifully. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with the scent throw uh, of my candles and the how it mixes with the fragrance oils that I use. So it's worth putting that out there as well. I use Eco Soya. And for my last factor, and it probably is the most powerful of the three, uh, is what temperature I pour, I pour my fragrance oils at. So when I was trialing with Eco Soya, there was a lot of contrasting information. One said, do it 10 degrees or 15 degrees higher than the melting point. Candle supply store where I get my wax from said, do it at this particular temperature. So I kind of went, hmm don't know who's right. Uh, luckily, my melting point temperature was about 55 degrees and the temperature that the candle supply store wanted me to pour at was about 60 degrees. 
So I just went straight for the middle uh, and now I pour it 57 degrees and it's just magic. It is magic for my wax melts, it's magic for my candles. It took a while because initially I was doing everything and pouring about 65 degrees. That was kind of my go-to at 65 um, and it just didn't work as well. It, it gave a nice scent throw, but it wasn't as impactful as what it is now. So yeah, I pour my fragrance oils when it hits 57 degrees. And I think that's just the magic point for my candles. I think it's a combination of four or five things. My dog is choking. Lily! So, hello. Go away, go away. So if you want it in terms of degrees higher than it's the melting point that it says on your wax, probably about 17 degrees higher than the melting point of my wax that I pour my fragrance oils in. Uh, it's worth also noting that I stir my oils and my wax for two minutes. I actually time that as well so that's like precision just so I know that the fragrance oil is completely gone all the way through the wax because so many candles as well that I've, I've come across that smell uh, when you first light them. But then when you go to relight them or relight the wax melts, uh, they don't smell anymore. Uh, so what good is that? So really make sure those fragrance oils are, um, have completely combined with your wax. And that's about it. And even though soy candles are notorious for needing about a week or two weeks to cure, mine are pretty much cured so I can light them with a really good scent throw in two to three days. Helps for selling them as well. Uh, but two to three days, I know I'm going to have a really good smell, smelling candle and that's it those four or five things i think combined together create a really nice candle so i hope some of that information helps you i do find playing around with what temperature you pour your fragrance oils at will help you the most no matter what wax you're using um i think you should keep on trialing like i said i used to pour at 65 um now i pour at 57 and it may you wouldn't think that that would make much of a difference but it does so i just say just keep trial and error uh every ring <laughs> wax and your fragrance oil until you get a really nice combination and if you want to use my combination that i've just said um do that because I, I know for a fact that that works so uh hopefully that can help as well if you're a beginner and you don't know what wax or wicks to use so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to. <laughs> and, uh, follow my Instagram at Mother Naked Candles. Thank you so much. Mwah!